Welcome back. The panel is with us. NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Hallie Jackson. Hugh Hewitt, host on the Salem Radio Network. Maria Teresa Kumar, president of Voto Latino. And Jake Sherman, senior writer for Politico. Look, I want to set up the conversation uh, with Peggy Noonan um, and what she wrote. Uh, it was a very, um, uh, it was a very elegant way of trying to write about the current state of politics. No one will talk about it in public because they're not idiots. Journalists don't want to be embarrassed if they've got it wrong. Democrats don't want to encourage complacency. Republicans don't want to demoralize the troops, and the networks have to keep everyone hopped up on the horse race. I will take a small offense to the last part of that comment, but uh, Jake Sherman is. You know, is this the thing that everybody's whispering about on Capitol Hill and around Washington as far as you're concerned as well these days? Yes. Uh, I, I mean, if you look across the board, polls out this morning have Donald Trump down by 12 points, have him losing almost every state in the Midwest. I've talked to people in the last couple of days, and I'm going to write this in the next couple of days. Uh, Republicans are going to lose seats in the House of Representatives that are at risk of obviously losing their Senate majority. So, yes, I mean, absolutely. I think it's it's undoubted. It's undoubtedly true that Republicans at this point and this clip might become famous if I'm wrong, um, are, are in, a, in a really tough spot. Hallie Jackson, um, how uh, self-aware, well, trust me, uh, let me ask it this way. Um, how self-aware self of this current situation are the people around the president? So that's a good question, Chuck, as far as the distinction between the president and then the people around him. And I would say this, there is an acknowledgement that the public polling is not obviously going their way. I still hear things from folks close to the campaign, around the campaign, about how internal polls show them doing better. There is a sense that people who were around the president four years ago in 2016 saw the polls maybe not moving their direction then. Obviously, it was a lot different of a landscape in 2016. But there's, from some of these folks, this sort of underdog fighter sense that they have lingering from the last four years. I will also say this, Chuck, for the president himself, I think he knows that if there is a way for him to to change some of this, right, to, to mm -hmm. change the slide that he seems to be on, it's by getting out. It's by getting out and doing rallies, talking to people, being out there. His coronavirus diagnosis means he has not been able to do that. And I can tell you that based on sources that I've talked to this weekend, he is climbing the walls to be able to get out of the White House compound. Mm -hmm. He's in this sort of mode, as one person put it, where he's in his, you know, nobody's listening to me, I'm right and everybody else is wrong kind of attitude, where he feels like he right. wants to be flexing his muscles, um, getting out, dictating some of these things. It, the, the challenge, of course, is that he has a team of people around him who are trying to channel some of that energy, if you will, into a way that could be potentially productive. And there's a real question mark of whether the president is willing to go along with those things or not right now. The bottom line is he's got these rallies set up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday right. in various key battleground states, Florida, right. Pennsylvania, for example. To him, that's what's going to make the difference. Uh, Hugh Hewitt, are we in October 1996 territory? Here's Ken Spain, a Republican strategist who told us on Friday, six months ago, Republicans were hoping that we would be talking about Senate races in Colorado, Arizona, and Maine. Instead, there's concern about the potential outcomes in states like South Carolina, Georgia, and Kansas. The point being is it was about this time in October of 96 when the word went out, it's every Republican for themselves, don't worry about Bob Dole anymore. How close are Senate Republicans to that mindset? Uh, a week ago, they were very close to that, Chuck, but not. This has been a week of enormous relief. I've interviewed a dozen Republican senators, and the vice presidential debate really turned it around for a lot of Republicans, as did the president's sort of powerful energy on uh, conservative media getting back out there. They're not afraid he's going to be out of the picture, generating base enthusiasm. I remember 96 when uh, Jack Kemp just got completely creamed by Al Gore in the vice mm -hmm. presidential debate. Well, this time, Vice President Pence played direct to Pennsylvania on fracking, direct yeah. to Pennsylvania on the Supreme Court. So I think across the Senate map, I believe the president is down in double digits, but closing nationally. But across the Senate map, yeah. this was a very good week. And I, that's not even counting the Cal Cunningham collapse in North Carolina. Maria Teresa Kumar, I, I, I will say this. I didn't... I was surprised at the lack of enthusiasm that I heard from Ted Cruz about the president's political standing. Well, he said that he's expecting a bloodbath, right? And I think that that's exactly why you have individuals now saying, shoot, we basically gave our Republican Party over to Donald Trump, and he has such an outsized figure. Our destiny is intertwined. You showed a, key, a clip of McSally. She couldn't distance herself from the president right. because she knows that if she denounces him, all of a sudden she is also on his bad list. But 
the people of Arizona also recognize that she is not the person that is going to get them out of this rut. When you look at the polls and you see that 79% of individuals are fearful for this election, it's not that they're fearful of COVID or healthcare or the environment. They're fearful of the person at the top of the White House making these decisions. This is going to be an election where folks are going to be going out because they're fearful and they're fearful about their safety. And what Kamala Harris did so brilliantly at during the vice presidential debates was that she was talking to suburban white women, Mm -hmm. saying, your life does not have to be this way. You're you're right now feeling insecure. Come back to the Democratic Party like you did during the 2018 election. And that's who she needed to win over, and I think she did an excellent job. You know, Maria Teresa, you you actually provided a good segue of a a graphic I wanted to put up for everybody here. This issue of who's hopeful and who's fearful, this was fascinating in Pew. Your feelings on the state of the country, and they asked a general question, are you fearful or are you... Or are you hopeful? What was interesting is while a majority of the country said they're fearful, Biden supporters, uh, Hallie Jackson, were more likely to be fearful. 79% of Biden supporters call themselves fearful. Trump supporters call themselves hopeful, 64%. I will say this, fear motivates. The Trump supporters were more fearful four years ago, and that worked. And you're starting to see that. And I'm struck by something that Senator Cruz said, Chuck, that he's been talking about, which is this idea that if fear does motivate, it's an acknowledgement from the senator that Democrats would likely do better. And it's because of those poll numbers that you're talking about, Chuck. So you're seeing Republicans trying to take that and spin it as Democrats are the ones painting this sort of dark and dystopian message to try to motivate Peter, people to come out to the polls. You know, in reality, some of the language and rhetoric that we've heard from President Trump, what he's been running on so far has been this message of law and order uh which his supporters appreciate, critics say, listen, you're talking about trying to scare, for example, suburban women and some of these key voting constituencies with with the language that you're using and with the picture that you're painting. So I do think that is something that is going to be critical over the next couple of weeks. Well, I will say this, the uh, political uh, the political landscape, if it is a fearful landscape, we know that that usually is a greater motivator. Um, Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd. And thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.